Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Gordon Ritchie. My pronouns are he and him. Karen Mills and I will be your service leaders this morning, and we are also the co-conductors of our choir, Coriolis. We will be joined as well by our minister, Reverend Roseberry Morrison. We trust that you feel welcome here in the sanctuary and those of you who are with us online. The Unitarian Church of Edmonton is a liberal, religious, multi-generational community. We celebrate a rich mosaic of free thinking, spiritual questing individuals joined in common support and action. We believe in the compassion of the human heart, the warmth of community, and the search for truth and meaning in our lives. We, grad, we gather with gratitude this morning on Treaty 6 land. A Treaty 6, a treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all our children. Before we begin our service, I'll have just a couple announcements to make. Next Sunday will be part two of the startup workshop. Saturday, what did I say? Sunday. That's when we recap what's happening the day before on the Saturday, <laughs> which is February 19th. That'll be from one to four. Um, you're more than likely to come here into the sanctuary. Robert and I were here yesterday with a lovely little group having a wonderful time. There were a great number of people that were online. You will need to register for that. Uh, the information for that will be in your Friday newsletter. It was a great experience yesterday. For those here in the sanctuary, you'll notice a whiteboard that's filled with ideas. We're taking these ideas and we are growing with them and putting them into a direction, which is where we're going to be heading. So if you haven't or didn't get to uh, take part in part one, no problem. I would strongly encourage you to come and join with us for part two next Saturday. There are many amazing people that helped to make this service possible. We have up in the sound booth today, Marg and Alicia and Mike. John Sproul created or helped to create our slides this morning. We have online Doug and Lynn. Thank you all for your dedication and service to this church. This morning, we offer to you our annual Teze service. In 1940, Brother Roger, a Catholic monk in a small village in Teze, France, started a community that surrounded the peaceful style of worship and prayer he believed in. Simple melodies were created and sung repeatedly as a form of worship and meditation. As a non-denominational global community, you will often hear songs sung in many languages during a Teze service. Our prelude this morning will be sung in Zulu. So as we begin this special time together, I invite you to Quiet yourselves and any electronic devices that you might have with me with you this morning as we listen to our prelude.
Good morning, my name is Karen Mills. My pronouns are she and her. It's so wonderful to be with you the, together this morning, whether in person or online. Taze is a very participatory type of service and a very reflective type of service. And so you'll notice after each piece that we sing, we're going to take just a few moments to let that sink and settle and enjoy that moment. In keeping with the participatory part of the service, our opening words this morning are a responsive reading. So I'm going to read uh, what is my service is the bold text, and I'm going to invite you to respond with all are welcome here. All are welcome here. So let us enter into the circle of energy and love. All are welcome here. We are an inclusive community of faith and kindness, memory and hope. All are welcome here. We are a community with a deep and abiding trust in the promise of goodness in every human heart and soul. And all are welcome here. We are a community of quest where we gather to study and search. All are welcome here. We are a community of service where gifts we receive uh, and give our compassion, forgiveness, gratitude, and devotion. All are welcome here. And we are a community of joy and laughter, where the worth of every individual is celebrated, and all are welcome here. I'm going to invite Robert Begg to come forward and light our chalice for us this morning, while we have words from Richard Gilbert a well-known and influential UU minister from the U.S. O oh, flaming chalice, symbol of a free faith, burn with the holy oil of helpfulness and service. Spread warmth and light and hope. Warm hearts grown cold with indifference. Light dark places with justice. Rekindle hope in despair. May we bring fuel for thy fire of love. May the oil of loving kindness flow from us to thy leaping flame. And may hands of service shelter thee that no winds of hate might extinguish your brightness. May the light of warmth be eternal and may we be the keepers of thy flame. I'll invite Jeff Bizantz forward for our first reading. This is a prayer of risk by Tamara Labak. Holy one who has given us the breath of life, today we remember to breathe deeply, to rest, to take in, to pause before we act. And then to take in another deep breath, poised on the edge and risk jumping in, risk taking action, risk speaking up, risk using the gifts we've been given so that at the end of our life, we can say with absolute clarity that no part of our existence was wasted in fear of failure or fear of success. Hold us, prepare us the way to begin to offer the gift of our awakened presence full of love and light today. Thank you, Jeff. Our first Teze hymn is number 1034, De Noche, found in your Teal hymn books. For those of you online, the text will be coming up on your screen. I invite you to join in. As is tradition with Teze, we repeat this song a few times. Though, do remain seated as we join in singing number 1034.
One of the purposes of this church community is to encourage all who gather here to grow more generous in spirit and action. We take an offering that supports and allows us to exercise that all-important generosity of spirit, an offering that will support this self-supporting church and its many ministries. Actually, it was yesterday of we were talking about all the many ministries of this church and how abundant they are and how important they are to us as a community. In addition to supporting this community, we also make a monthly commitment to the wider community. One half of the unidentified cash that is received is given to an outside organization. For the month of February, we are sharing our abundance with the I Human Youth Society. In 1997, iHuman Youth Society has engaged Edmonton's marginalized youth to foster positive personal development, well-being, and social change. They support youth impacted by the negative outcomes associated with poverty, intergenerational trauma, addiction, mental health, abuse, racism, discrimination, and exploitation. Our offering plates are located at the exits those in the sanctuary may leave a donation at the end of the service. For those of you online, I encourage you to visit the iHuman website and make a deposit and donation. We thank you for your generosity of spirit. With our time, our talent, and our money, we support the work of this Unitarian Universalist tradition. Let us join in singing from You I Receive. Every once in a while, late in the evening, if I'm feeling a little restless or a little out of sorts, believe it or not, I go to the computer and I'll go to the YouTube channel and I will listen to, to Taze music. One thing that I will always notice is, is that there will always be candles that are being lit. Candles lit as prayers. Prayers for those who are in need, those who are grieving, those experiencing loss, those who are alone. But there will always be candles that are lit as blessings, celebrating the many joys and the many gifts that are in our lives. And so this morning, we too light candles. For those of you online, you're invited to write in the chat anything that's on your mind, a prayer or a wish. For those of us here in the sanctuary, I invite you to come to the back of the sanctuary and come forward one at a time to light your, uh, to light your candle. And there is a, a glass here and a basket for your taper. We are taking an extra bit of time this morning as we light candles, so there is no rush. Before we do so, I offer you these words by Catherine Esty. Little flame, light the tender kindling of our souls, and soon a roaring blaze shall be of warmth and love and community. From this little spark, May the fire of passion spread from heart to heart and light our way, sweet spirit, and light our way.
an invocation to the spirit of life, an alternative Lord's Prayer by Alex Jensen. Spirit of life and love, holy God, source eternal, in our midst yet ever so elusive, to breathe your sacred name is a blessing. Your world become, your world be done here on earth, inspired by our aspirations to do and be better people. May we have all that we need to survive, live and thrive. Remind us to be gentle. May we love mercy and kindness, recalling the times when we've fallen short ourselves. Call us to be firm. May we not be tempted to follow selfish motivations or reside in our narrow privileges, unexamined and uninterrogated. Move us to counter and overcome evil and injustice in ourselves, our lives, and institutions. Yours is the beloved community, the fire of commitment in our hearts, and the spirit of generosity and abundance now and always. Amen. Our next hymn is number 1047, Nada de Turbe. We will be singing this in Spanish. Nada de Turbe, Nada te espante, quien a Dios tiene, nada le falta. Nada te turbe, nada te espante, solo Dios basta. Let us remain seated and sing together, Nada de Turbe.
Psalm 23, for this moment, by Kevin Tars. May I remember in this tender moment that love is my guide. May I remember in this te tender moment that love is my guide always, shepherding me towards ways of openness and of compassion. I have what I need, really. With love at my side, above me, below me, in front of me, behind me, every cell of me, love infused everywhere. Just when the weight of the world I inhabit threatens to drop me in place and press my hope down into the ground beneath me, love invites me to rest a while and leads the center of my soul into the quiet, still restoring waters nearby that somehow I hadn't noticed. And so love quietly sets me once again on its tender and demanding path, even when the walls close in on me and the cries of death echo through untold corners, gripping my heart with fear and sadness. I know. I know all will be well, that I will be well when love whispers near to me, glints at the corner of my eye, rests with gentle and persistent invitation upon my shoulders. Yes, love blesses me, even as the sources and symbols of my pain looks on. Love blesses me from its infinite well, and I turn and notice that goodness and kindness and grace follow me everywhere, everywhere I go. I live in the house of love, love that will not let me go. I live in a house of love, and I always will.
The circle has healing power. In the circle, we are all equal. When in the circle, no one is in front of you, no one is behind you, no one is above you, no one is below you. The sacred circle is designed to create unity. The hoop of life is also a circle. On this hoop, there is a place for every species, every race, every tree, and every plant. It is this completeness of life that must be respected in order to bring about health on this planet. Chief Ogala Lakota, Chief Dave. Now imagine we are all one, we are in one big circle and in our mind's eye, let us bring those online into our circle and those online to imagine we are all in your circle. In this circle, you belong. In this circle, your presence is required for without you, this circle would not be complete. There would be empty spaces where this circle cries out for your essence. I now invite you to continue to set aside your distractions to become as comfortable as you can and to feel your feet on the ground, your body on the floor, the chair, the couch, the bed, whatever is holding you at this moment. Imagine you are being held, squeezed, Give yourself a squeeze and you are being comforted by that which supports you and that you are being held in this great circle you are now a very important part of now follow your breath notice how your body moves to accommodate the life-giving oxygen and as it moves to discard what we no longer need. Our bodies perform magic with each breath. And as we pay attention to our breath, our senses change and we relax. I invite you just to take a few breaths of intention. Notice your breath. And in our spirit, as we have quieted ourselves and settled into this meditative moment, into this meditative morning, let us each listen to that still, small voice within. I'm going to read Unity Devotion by Kelly Murphy Mason. All our souls speak to us if we trust ourselves to hear them. What do they tell us on this day, this very season? Whether our innermost yearnings find a voice and a sincere intention, a prayer, a text, a profound lament, or sudden insight, we honor these. We stay present to the wisdom that arises within. We welcome whatever arises, be it bidden, or unbidden. We find rest in our calm center, that secure core of our being which houses our surest sense of the holy. We allow ourselves to know consolation. We grow mindful, ever mindful, not only of ourselves, but also of those dear to us, those here in our midst, online, those absent today, those recovering, those ill, those held in close memory, those in distant places, those we have lost. Feeling ourselves enfolded in loving kindness that is everywhere abiding together. We enter again into sacred silence for a moment.
emerging from the silence, we see that we are together still. We notice the gratitude that is in our hearts today, and we do not fail to rejoice. We are blessed by this present company and this special time we have set aside for this devotion. We give thanks for this moment of respite and for every tender mercy we have known in our lives and through the ages. Amen. Ubuntu is a Zulu term that roughly translates to human kindness. Humanity toward others, or perhaps a belief in a universal bond of sharing that connects all of humanity. So through the philosophy of Ubuntu, we are all connected here this morning. Luckily for me, there has been an Ubuntu-style choir wherever I go. And even though I haven't attended the one here yet, I love that style of choir because we can just come as we are. No need for voice training. It's kind of like Coriolis. No need for singing auditions. You don't have to read music, but it helps. Or you don't even have to read at all. You only love, have to love being in the circle. Feeling the vibrations of the music, the drum, and follow the music. You get to make mistakes, thankfully. You're allowed to practice over and over at your own pace and time, and if you're having trouble, you can get help. You could even get a recording of your part. What a beautiful metaphor for living in the spirit of Ubuntu. We don't need to be special to belong. We only need to love the beating of our heart and notice when we are stirred, scared, need help, or feel that wonderful thing called love. I've done an exercise with kids in the before times where I have them stand in a circle and they have to all hold their arm out straight. You could try it with me if you like. And then I put a cookie in all of their hands and I invite them to eat the cookie with their arm straight. They're not allowed to bend their arm and they kind of look at the cookie and they try all different kinds of things. And you can just see how frustrated they get. Of course, the trick is that you have to feed one another the cookies. And you can't get a cookie in your mouth with a straight arm. I've tried it. It's not possible. The kids always giggle when they find out. It's usually one real smart kid that understands physics that figures it out first. And then the rest of them all follow, follow along. And they all giggle and laugh and feed each other their cookies. Their, the lesson is not lost on them or anyone else. We sometimes need others, one another, to meet our basic needs. Might not be a straight elbow, but it's something else that gets in our way. We are social creatures. We need one another. And this pandemic has been so hard on us, especially those who live alone. Let us never forget the power of the circle, how our presence makes a difference, and how our absence creates, creates a longing for what you bring to the circle. Yesterday, as Gordon mentioned, some of us sat in a circle here in the sanctuary, and many more were in circle online. We shared stories. We, re we were reminded of the rich and vibrant community that UCE is. And we did some big sky thinking, big blue sky, blue sky dreaming. That's up on the, some, the one group that was here. Our blue, the blue sky dreaming is up on that board. And blue sky dreaming means you don't let resources or lack thereof. There's no its, ands, and buts involved. 
nothing to limit the imagination. Then we shared the ideas with one another that each group thought was most important. These ideas were collected and are going to be part of a living circle created by all of us. And we'll start to winnow it down next week. And you can still contribute your ideas and thoughts by emailing me your big sky thinking minister at uce.ca. What do you hope for, wish for, imagine, desire, and would like to see for UCE? So we'll be meeting here again next Saturday online and in person, whichever you choose. Your presence at that circle is so important because your ideas, your essence, your experience, your history, and your creativity is needed. We are in this together. We are connected by something stronger than we can imagine or understand. And that is why the concept of Ubuntu is so important. And especially as it pertains to singing in circle, singing songs that touch us, Talking about singing is kind of like talking about storytelling or painting or riding a bike. It leaves a lot to be desired. Talking about it isn't fun. You have to experience it. So I invite you into the next Teze song. One of the premises of Teze singing or sacred song circle is that through repetition, the words and music have a chance to wend their way into you through your body, your mind, and your spirit. So now, let's ease into our next Teze song, 1048, Ubi Karatas. I'd like to share with you now Ibrahim's prayer, written by Jan Tadeo. Beloved children of the oneness of many names, you who cover the land in numbers greater than the stars, I petition you, I pray to you, because you are the fruit of God's promise to the world, 
because each of you holds a piece of the truth of all that is. Because the vision of beloved community needs each one of you. And this is what I pray. Show loving kindness to one another. Use wisely the gifts of humanity. Your free will, imagination, creativity, compassion, your knowledge, power of understanding and awareness, all that is an image of the highest good. See the beauty in your cousin's eye, the wisdom of your sibling's smile. Listen for the truth which is unspoken in each heart. Hold one another with tenderness and allow love to transcend fear, fear that too often darkens your thoughts and poisons your heart. Come together, follower, followers of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all. Embrace the children and followers of all the prophets who call us toward peace, all the seekers and people of goodwill adore all that emerges from the mystery of life. Treasure one another. Call forth wholeness for your fellow creatures. Protect and renew the sustenance for life, the earth, the air, the water. Hold the fire with gentleness and use it wisely for growth and goodness. Come together from the deserts, the mountains, the wetlands, the shores. Lift the veil of indifference. Learn to understand one another's plight and share in the beauty, wonder, joy, and awe of life. Love mercy and kindness. Walk humbly with one another and with all creation. Love your neighbors as you love yourself. Give to others the full measure of your goodness so that they will give unto you the same. As you honor the covenant of your traditions, may you also covenant with all peoples of goodwill, a covenant of love, compassion, humility, generosity, gratitude, and celebration. May it always be so. Peace, salam, shalom. Blessed be. Amen. I invite you now to sing our hymn of the month, Love the Sacred Creed. Gordon will play it through once for us, and then we'll begin. Morning, by Rebecca Parker. 
Your gifts, whatever you discover them to be, can be used to bless or curse the world. The mind's power. Find the wounds, welcome of a stranger, praise what is sacred, do the work of justice and offer love. Any of these can draw down the prison door, hoard bread, abandon the poor, obscure what is holy, comply with injustice or withhold love. You must answer the question, what will you do with your gifts? Choose to bless the world. The choice to bless the world is more than an act of will, a moving forward into the world with the intention to do good. It is an act of recognition, a confession of surprise, a grateful acknowledgement that in the midst of a broken world, unspeakable beauty, grace, and mystery abide. There is an embrace of kindness that encompasses all life, even yours. And while there is injustice, anesthetization, or evil, there moves a holy disturbance, a benevolent rage, a revolutionary love, protesting, urging, insisting that which is sacred will not be defiled. Those who bless the world live their life as a gesture of thanks for this beauty and this rage. The choice to bless the world can take you into solitude to search for sources of power and grace, native wisdom, healing, and liberation. More, the choice will draw you into community, the endeavor shared, the heritage passed on, the companionship of struggle, the importance of keeping faith, the life of ritual and praise, the comfort of human friendship, the company of earth, the course of life welcoming you. None of us alone can save the world. Together, that's another possibility waiting. Someone like to come and extinguish our chalice. Thank you. Here our hearts have been touched. They've been lit, our souls have been lit with the beauty of this day. May the warmth that has been kindled stay with us through the week. May we take it with us, hold it in our hearts and minds until we are together again. Thank you. Let us bless and keep one another. Let us bless and keep one another. Let kindness rule our hearts and compassion our lives until we meet again. Amen. Thank you.
I invite everyone now to stand, join in spirit, but not physically, and sing Carry the Flame. Thank you. 